Are you wanting to stream on TikTok, but you're struggling to meet the requirements to actually go live, whether it's applying to be able to use TikTok Studio or reaching a thousand followers, and you just want to be able to get the engagement of using a vertical platform to grow your stream or your content or whatever. Today, I might have a solution and it's not even TikTok. Let me show you. You're going to think I'm crazy, but YouTube. I actually went live this morning using vertical format, going live and actually being in people's shorts feeds, just like if you were going to be using TikTok and you're actually being live and scrolling through. I was in people's shorts feeds, getting discovered, having people join chat and have a conversation, all while, by the way, I was not or streaming from PC, everything. You can also do this from mobile, obviously. Um, but I was doing this from PC and I actually was streaming dual. So not only was I streaming horizontal, but I was streaming vertical at the exact same time. It was so straightforward, so easy to be able to set up. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But this was, I was having great conversations. People that were never a part of my content, discovering my content, asking about it, just having a good time. All you have to do is be able to go live on YouTube, which is a lot lower requirements, if not the easiest requirements as compared to TikTok. Getting it set up is fairly easy, but I'm gonna show you how to do it to where you can stream both horizontal and vertical, and you can apply these strategies to whatever platform you're using, but we're gonna be using OBS to be able to accomplish this. So here is OBS, and you'll kind of be able to see what I've been working with here, but I'm gonna show you how to set everything up so that it works, and then we're also gonna be able to move over into how to be able to set it up so that you can do both. Data brokers will sell your information to spammers, scammers, or anyone who may want to target you. Your full name, email, health records, your address, everything is out there. That's why I've been using Aura, today's sponsor. Aura shows me exactly who's using my information and automatically submits opt-out requests so that this information can get out of their hands. Cleaning up this information not only prevents spam, but also protects me from hackers being able to use this information to gain access to social media accounts, bank accounts, and so much more. It's really easy to set up and I don't have to download several different apps to be able to do things like VPN, antivirus, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and so much more. I get everything at one affordable price. I value my privacy and I value yours. So go to aura.com slash darkensires to start your 14 day free trial now. Once again, thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. All right, so number one with OBS, you can do plugins. I want you to go download Atom. This is where you're gonna go get their vertical plugin. It's, and I'll leave the link down in the description. I'm not sponsored by them, but it's a really cool tool and it's free. It's a good plugin for OBS. You should go check it out. The next thing is you need to make sure you can go live. So to do that, studio.youtube.com, get into your YouTube account. You're going to go to settings, channel, feature eligibility, and you're going to make sure that this second one, intermediate features, is enabled. So when you click this, it'll say that you verified your phone number, etc. And this is how you're actually able to do live streaming. Side note, even though you get approved and you're verified for it, you do have a 24 hour period before you can go live on the platform. So those of you who are trying to get into it, just know there is a 24 hour barrier. Next, once you've already installed Atom and you have OBS, all of that should go ahead and quickly link together. This is kind of what you're going to be met with. And what you'll see is you'll get this. You'll have vertical over here on the side and then underneath my webcam, actually I'll move my camera up here. Underneath my webcam, you actually have vertical scenes and vertical sources. And these are the things that you're going to set up for the actual canvas for your vertical over here. I'm moving my camera all over the place. Sorry, guys. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create some scenes and sources and then put them inside the vertical panel. You can link them, which is really cool. What we'll, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and hit plus. We can go ahead and choose scene, a cam, and you can see it pops up in the vertical and I can frame this however I want. Let's say that this is how I want that frame to be. I can actually right click this scene, do linked scenes and choose choose whatever scene I want it to be. And when I'm on that scene, this is the scene that will be live for the vertical. Now that's not explaining how to do the streaming part, but just a little tutorial on how to do the Atom. There's a lot of tutorials. I'll leave a really dedicated one from Harris Heller down in the description. He did a really awesome one. He's partnered with this and uh, sure I could do one, but 
you should go check out Harris if you've never found Harris before. All right, so what we need to do is actually create two different stream keys. One of them we have to make sure that's dedicated. So here's how we do this. We're gonna click create and we're gonna click go live so that we can get to this page. The next thing we're gonna do is actually click schedule stream. And we're, we're needing to schedule the stream because every time we're gonna have to make sure that that stream key is being used. We can't just click go live to the platform like we do on Twitch or on other platforms. You have to actually schedule the stream choose the actual stream key that we want to do that's locked and then everything will work. It's just the process, okay? This page, if you've never been on YouTube Studio, this is kind of like their YouTube dashboard. So there's a couple of things we can change here. Number one, I would think that auto start and auto stop needs to be enabled for you. And the next one is unlist live replay once stream ends. If you want that, where you, that your stream isn't automatically live on your channel, when you end, turn it on if you'd want it to still be you know, public or whatever the case, turn it on or off if you want it to be unlisted. Also, low latency is what I'd recommend. Unless you are only streaming 1080p, then do ultra low latency. If you're doing 1440p or above, you need to do low latency. The next thing is to actually like select the stream key. And if you click this and you've used YouTube before to stream, you might have a whole bunch of these already preset. Like I've got some where I was using Restream uh, and et cetera. So what you're gonna do is make sure you either create a new stream key or you can manage the ones you have but i've created two separate ones one that is a horizontal and one that is vertical and i'll create one so you can see we're going to call this one test and we can give this a description we're just going to call this vertical stream key and then it's going to ask streaming protocol leave this as rtmp HLS is if we're gonna do something with HDR stuff. And then some people might think turning on manual settings and choosing the resolution and FPS is the best thing. Don't do it, just leave it as auto and let YouTube kind of just pick up what you send it and then adjust. So what we're gonna do is once you hit create, you'll see that it actually creates a stream key here and then it will give you the stream key and the URL and a backup if you were streaming like a second instance in case something crashed. So what you do is you have to get this key and URL posted in the platform. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna copy these. Now I'm gonna go over into OBS and you'll see that there's a gear inside of the vertical plugin. If I click the gear, and we show right here, we'll see that the resolution is 1920 by 1080, but vertical, so flipped 1080 by 1920. Audio is 160. By the way, that's the limit for a YouTube. It's 320 in total for Twitch. It's 160 for YouTube. But we're actually gonna go down to the streaming setting, enable it. You can choose the name and name it whatever you want, but this is where you put your key and your server URL right here. Post them, paste them. And then for advanced, this is where you need to be able to choose all of your streaming settings. Now, another side note, this is going to use two encodes for your system. So if you're going to stream just vertical, then great, set this up like you normally would, have fun. But if you're gonna be doing two separate streams, using this plugin, it's not going to use one outgoing send for your upload speed. So make sure you understand your upload and divide it accordingly. If you have a lot of upload, who cares? But if you have a limited like 10 megabit, you know, make sure you don't use 6,000 for your mainstream and then 6,000 for your second one because you're gonna have a horrible time streaming. Your drop frames, a whole bunch of network stuff, don't do that. So you remember, this is two separate streams. This shouldn't hit your computer any harder, especially if you're using hardware encoding like NVENC or AMF or even QuickSync. All right, once all of that is set up and you've went in and set up all of your scenes, all of your sources, and you're ready to go, you just click go live and you stream. And I've shown you a clip before, but here is a clip of me actually live using this in the short speed. It's actually how it looks. A viewer actually of my stream recorded this and then posted it to Twitter so that I could be able to use it for this video because I couldn't actually pull up my own stream in the shorts feed. It would just pull up the regular YouTube video. Uh, but he was actually discovering me from there. So he did a long recording showing what it looks like from the viewer's perspective, just like when you're live on TikTok. This was a long video, but let's recap it and keep it really nice and neat. If you're trying to go live on a vertical platform, but you're struggling getting access to TikTok, YouTube shorts, it could be the perfect solution for you. Make sure you get the Atom vertical plugin that I'll leave a link in the description, install it in OBS, go ahead and create a dedicated stream key and URL, 
paste those into the Atom plugin, set up all of your scenes and sources and link them and everything. It's just like a normal OBS, just vertical, and then go live. Now I went live today using both the horizontal as well as the vertical and have fun with it. And small side note, you will actually, when you're in here, every time you go live, you're gonna have to pop out this chat and get this URL if you wanna dock it as a browser inside OBS. But if you're just going live from your main OBS, to YouTube, then it'll be just fine. Just go ahead and select it. There is a limitation if you're doing two YouTube streams. So you're gonna have one that's your vertical and one that's your horizontal. Uh, they don't combine the chats. So you will have to actually pop out the chat from the dashboard to be able to see it for both streams, unless you can go ahead and create a custom browser doc and put them inside OBS. All right, that was a lot but I hope you got some value out of that. Comment down below, check out these two videos and I'll see you next time. Hope this was helpful. Y'all have a great day.